Hi guys, and welcome back. Today, we are talking about swing plane. So, find an open space. If you have some reflective surface, like a mirror, or a large window, or even a camera or something like that, that you can see yourself in, it's gonna be super helpful. Let it begin. Drop. So swing plane, when we talk about a swing plane, what we're talking about is if I had no joints in my arm and I rotated, if you had my arms trace this rotation, that would be my swing plane. And of course you can tilt that rotation and now my swing plane is a little bit lower, a lot of it lower. So for example, my right hand is gonna trace this plane the whole time and if I came all the way through the follow through, it would get back down at that same point. Likewise, my left hand would trace the same exact plane the whole time. It's really important for a couple of reasons. First, to create space for the throw. So instead of going down here where I have all this room to swing, all this room away from my body for the disc to travel, if I decide to change my swing plane, so right now it's low and it's moving up, and so my swing plane's here, if I decide instead to go here and then cut off my swing plane, I wreck all of the space that I've created in the earlier parts of the throwing motion. So if I'm here, low, coming in, and now I decide to go down, I start pinching off this line. Instead of being able to throw out away from the body, reference our last video. So let me clarify this point because there's been a lot of questions here. Nose angle in reference to swing plane. Imagine my swing plane was vertical. It was straight up and down. And I'm a human, so I'm not able to show this perfectly right now. But imagine it was straight up and down. My nose angle in reference to that swing plane, what would nose up be at that point? To which side of your screen? Three, two, one. Correct, wow, you're a genius. To the right side of your screen. That would be nose up. And if I could, on that swing plane, get the stamp to show to you, that would be nose down. Now, to what extent nose down do you need to be? Depends on the disc, depends on what you're trying to do with the line, but that's nose down. Right, so if I was here on this swing plane, I'd make sure that I showed you guys the stamp a little bit and that would be nose down. Third reason that it's super important to have this swing plane is that space on the back side of the swing is gonna let you be aggressive through the hit because it has all this room here now to start decelerating your arm in a healthy manner. If you try to break your swing plane and go up and then you start pulling down at the end and you try to hit that really hard, you're gonna start tearing up your shoulder and it's not gonna be fun. Now, if you throw really slow, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can mess all sorts of stuff up if you go really slow, but I'm assuming you're here because you wanna throw a little bit further or a little bit cleaner. Um, last and probably what most people care about the most is this will help you with your angle control. If you're constantly flipping your swing plane down at the end, you're gonna have overstable discs that turn over, you're gonna have flippy discs that turn over, you're gonna have no angle integrity with your discs, which means that they'll all fly pretty similar, which is kind of annoying because uh, we don't have the same hole 18 times in a row. So we need to know how to control our angles. And a lot of that is being able to manipulate amount of tilt with our body to adjust where our swing plane is at as well as being able to change discs and throw different discs on the same line and have them do different things. So the swing plane is primarily a low to high swing plane because we will most likely be using some amount of tilt on our throws. It's not gonna be a straight across swing plane, right? Twirly Bird 2.0 would look like this here. And now we have the swing plane low to high on most of the throws. That same movement always happens. You always rotate your shoulders back and you coil and then in and out, right? We just do it on a lower plane here. And now we've got kind of this hyzer plane, which is very common. Josh, when I do that, all of my discs come out on hyzer. I understand. 
And you know what? That's probably a good thing for a while. A lot of people that I talk to about this, I always say a lot of people, and then I feel mad about saying a lot of people because I make like this big generalization, but it's just generally what I see. I run into this a lot. When people are first working on their swing plane, when students are first learning to create that space and swing the hip and the shoulders and everything up, it does come out on hyzers a lot. That's why this style is kind of called a hyzer style because it comes out on hyzer. Now, before you try to fix that and learn all of the different angles, stay there for a while, my friend. Like, fix the swing plane for a second, throw it for a month, and if you need something to go straight, throw a flippy disc. If you need something to go right, throw a flippier disc. And just work with that for a while. Get good with your swing plane before trying to get every angle in the book. Get the swing plane correct, then we can learn how to make the alterations within it. So how do you know when you're ready to move on to the next part? Because most of you won't be. And by the way, this isn't good for me to say, for you to stop watching the video now and come back to it later. That kind of kills our YouTube analytics and it doesn't push the video. But I'm a coach, so I don't really care. The test for this is to take something really understable, get all your understable stuff. For example, I've got some OT sales here. This one is a 167 OT sale. You should be able to throw these things on hyzer and if you've got good swing plane and decent spin, you should be able to keep it from turning over and burning, right? Understable stuff, you just need good swing plane, good spin to make it workable. So this is the test before you move forward. Tell me that's not a usable shot for your game. Okay, 167, bombs away. Big high finish with my right arm. Now I've got a nice pushing right to left drive. So that's one of the reasons, swing plane is probably one of the reasons why you're turning and burning all your understable stuff. Think about it, Paul Macbeth can throw a Luna 400 feet on a rope. You don't have more arm speed than that guy. He's got good spin and good swing plane integrity, and that's why it pushes. Now, if you did not pass that test, you should stop watching the video here and go practice. Okay, for those of you who passed the test, congratulations. For those of you who watched anyways, I don't know what to say to you, brother. How do we change the angles? So when we go to change our release angle, so we've got this plane right? We tilt the plane. This obviously makes things more or less hyzer here, right? This is a decent amount of hyzer. The more I lift it up, the less hyzer it gets. All right, but what about anhyzers? I'll show you a couple angles. This one will be a steep hyzer because I'll have a lot of tilt, so my swing plane will be here. So this means that I will be finishing very high. And then stand it up a little bit. Now, if I want an Anheuser, you can keep notching through those things. That's the primary method is we adjust our swing plane height. The other things that we see pros do, Simon, Drew Gibson, especially Simon, is they will adjust kind of their forearm angle. So if you want to throw Anheusers, you'll notice in the side-by-side -side here that both Simon and Drew have their arm comfortably pronated. So it's down like this. So it's almost on an Anheuser angle already. So they can still maintain this low to high swing path. So my right shoulder starts low, goes up into the pocket, goes up out of the pocket, and now it's an Anheuser. So this is the thing that you start working with a little bit more when you start getting into the flatter, the flatter or the Anheuser angles. Now, that's kind of similar to if I'm here, obviously it's not straight up and down like this to throw a hyzer. 
So we start kind of marrying these two concepts of tilting our swing plane down and then pronating the forearm back here to get some nice Anheuser. I'll show you one. Okay, so I'll go comfortably pronated in. So from out to in to out, and then my hand will finish nice and forward before it starts tracing the backside of this swing plane, right? Very important that I don't start dropping here because now I'm telling my hand down and I'm now I'm throwing down and putting my energy down instead of forward into the disc. Anheuser overstable disc. Pew. There it is. So there's your Anheuser. That was a flex with a silver lat rive, but that's where you can start adjusting. You start adjusting some here. And then here's your test for uh, getting good swing plane on the Anheusers. You should be able to take something that's overstable and you should be able to put it up on an Anheuser and have it push right. If you start dropping your hand here, it'll go Anheuser and then it'll teeter out and die instead of push right. So let me show that. There it is. Good push before it comes back. Oh yeah. Cool, and I got out of the way. Bonus. Bonus. So that's the final test for this. Now you can change your angles and continue to hit through and have good swing plane. So, which is important obviously, or else we wouldn't be making the video. All right, guys, well, that's it. Uh, OT Sales on our website. That's it for today's video. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's on our Patreon. <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> on our Patreon. So head over there, of course. Any kind of subscription or whatever you want to do here is cool, but uh, that's up to you. The Patreon's not up to you. Uh, 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 uh.